Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the MiG-21 Biz again. In this video, I want to show you how to use the ARC-9 ADF system together with the NDBs to navigate the aircraft. Let's talk about the NDBs first. The NDBs are non-directional beacons, and they send out a signal on their frequency. And each NDB station has its unique frequency, and on which it sends out its unique Morse code which you can listen to and use to find out if you have tuned to the correct NDB station. Aboard the aircraft you have the ARC-9 ADF system, uh, ARC-9 Automatic Direction Finder system, which basically tunes a couple antennas towards the station and can find out in which direction relative to the aircraft the station is. And um, a normal ADF receiver, as you would know it from a more modern plane, for example the KA-50 helicopter or maybe also the A-10, on a more modern plan plane you can tune in the frequency directly. You look at your map and you see, oh, you have the frequency 975 kilohertz, for example, and you can tune it in. M the MiG-21, being that old, it doesn't have the capability to tune in the frequency on the fly. You have to use a uh, frequency, or you the frequency has to be stored in the presets and this can only be done by the ground crew outside of the aircraft. So basically once you take off there is no changing in frequencies. The MiG-21 can store a total of 72 frequencies which is plenty for the current, um, current Georgian map because there are only around 40 to 50 stations on that map and only 30 are pre-programmed into our MiG-21. And um, let's have a look at the aircraft side controls now and we will talk about the stations and the station pre-storage in a couple of minutes again. Down here on the fuse panel we have one of the more important switches, the power switch. We obviously want to have that on. Over here on the left hand side, which you might can remember from the RSBN tutorial, we have this selector here. The upper position would be RSBN navigation and the lower position would be air car or ADF navigation. And basically this switch determines in which direction or to which device this pointer is pointing towards. If we have it in the upper position it would use the data from the RSBN navigation system and point towards the RSBN station and in the lower position it would uh, use the data from the ARK9 navigation system and point towards the ADF system. And we will have it in the lower position obviously because we want to use the ADF system. And as you can remember, we have the different, uh, the 72 pre-stored stations. And those 72 slots in which a uh, frequency can be stored are divided into four pr primary sectors, which can be selected with this, this switch, as you can see in the inner scale, one, two, three, four. And each primary sector, again, is divided in two subsectors. So we have sector one, 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 two, we have two, one, two, two, and so on, until four, two which is the last sector. And each of this subsector can store, which is over here, can store nine unique stations. So basically we have in sector in primary sector one, subsector one, we have nine different stations. And um, currently those um, sectors are stored into it uh, accordingly to graphical position. Basically the sector one, one, would be the Ukraine and the Crimea, the sector 2-1 and 2-2 would be the Russian part of the map, and the sector 3-1 is the Georgian part of the map. Which leaves the sector 4-1, 4-2 and the sector 1-2 free, basically where you can, as a user, assign your own stations to it. And we currently, we would reference the map to find that out, as you can see on this picture. If you want to fly, for example, from our position over to Z, over the sea, up towards north into Russia. We would reference the map, which is which can be found in the manual, to find out which station is on which preset and uh, on which um, sub and primary category it can be found. So basically we can find out the NDB we want to navigate towards first is on primary sector 3 subsector 1, which I have set here on this switch now, and we can find out that it's the first station in that group. So basically if you press on the 1 here, 
we now have tuned that. Now we wait a couple of seconds, as you can see, we can he and hear the system has found the station and it turned the needle, to uh, the needle towards it already. So basically, as you can see, on the horizontal situation indicator, we can see that the, uh, the pointing end is pointing towards the ADF system, uh, or tr sorry, towards the NDB station, and the round end is pointing away from it. So now we know the system is about 45 degrees off to our left and we will go ahead and align ourselves with that position. First let me put off the aircraft active pause. Okay, here we go. Uh, there's the autopilot doing a bit of alignment. And now I'm taking over manual control, putting the aircraft in the turn and turning ourselves towards that needle pointer. I'm just doing a s small turn here, slow turn, just give me a couple of seconds. And um, different to the RSBN, we don't get any range information. We don't know how far the station is away from us. So basically we are only getting, getting the direction towards the station. We don't have any controls to adjust anything, we, not like we could do with the um, RSBN where we could use use this selector down here to basically find our uh, localizer curves or our radial to the station, we can only fly directly towards or away from the RSP, uh, from the NDB station, which we are doing right now, we're flying towards the NDB station. And another thing you might hear in the background is the Morse code the station is sending us. The Morse code can be used basically to find out if you have tuned into the correct station and it basically is um, the station identifier which is three letters long which is transmitted. Uh, when you know which station you want to tune to, there is actually no real point to listening to that because um, there is no situation in sim where a station might be offline for some reason. But in the real world a station identifier is also not used if the station is sending out co incorrect information or is maybe on a wrong frequency or something when they are doing maintenance or another fault happens. Anyway, we can listen to the Morse code, but we don't have to. If we don't have to, we go to this panel down here, or we don't want to. We go to this panel down here and flitch, flick, uh, flip this switch into towards the up position, which only allows us to hear to the radio, and we don't hear the communication anymore. The communication sounds anymore. And so basically, we are flying towards the station. Uh, station looking outside, we know is at the coastline, so it's about 75 kilometers away, I guess. And uh, I will fast forward and I will hear you over the station and we will look how the indications change once we overfly the station. Now the station should come up any moment. We are only a couple of kilometers out, I think. And as you can see, the indicator is starting to deflect uh, from our center position. And as closer we get, the faster the deflection will be. And if it starts to spin very fast, as it will start any second now, we can feel that the station is very close because obviously there can't be such a huge direction towards the station change if we are very far away. As you can see that it's doing like a one degree jump every now and then and it will probably speed up quite shortly. I will just wait until we have overflown the position or the station and then we will go ahead and tune in the next station according to our flight plan. I can see that now we are like five degrees off it should, yeah, as you can see, it starts to tick faster and faster every second. And which means if you look outside, the station should be at the coastline, which is about to come below us. And as you can see, we are now already about 10 degrees, a bit less off. And we should have the station overpass any second now. And as you can see, the needle is now doing a uh, lot of changes very quickly. And this means basically we are currently passing the station. Uh, we are passing right of the station. So the station is on our, our left down there. But it's it's very close and it's... We are quite close to the station. 
So now we have safely overflow the station and we know we have passed it, it starts to get behind us. We go ahead and if you look at our flight plan, we know we want to tune into station uh, 2, 1, uh, as primary sector 2, secondary sector 1 and station number 7, which we did. And you should see this pointer, the pointer is currently turning around. Uh, basically in the top right in the 45 degree position the pointer would be in its home position in its default position meaning that we currently don't receive the targeted NDB station for whatever reason let me just quickly check my inputs here because we should receive it it was sector 1 was it? nope we are not receiving that station which is a bit, bit of a bumper. And just let me quickly reference my sources here and I'll be right back. Okay, um, uh, welcome back guys. I'm very sorry for the technical problem there. Or it wasn't really a technical problem. What we had there, I think, was we were just outside of the range of the station. We just have been a tad outside of the range. I just made here the left hand turn and now we can see our ADF pointer or our direction pointer is pointing towards the station which is up north along the coastline as well as you have seen on the flight plan. So um, this is a thing which can happen with NDBs. I mean I'm not sure why we shouldn't or we couldn't receive this one. It shouldn't be too far away, only a couple of kilometers, a couple hundred kilometers maybe, but it shouldn't be too far away and um, the Russian we are, uh, NDBs are quite long range normally, but we couldn't receive it this time, which is something you have to consider while flying NDBs. And um, there is actually a thing you can do if you don't receive the NDB immediately as we did. There would be a possibility around this, and uh, this possibility is w would be to fly away from the station on a fixed heading. You would go ahead and you would, on your map, would measure the heading from one station to another station. And you would go ahead and once you have overflown the station as we did, you would have turned towards the heading um, you want to, to, fly, to fly into, or like the heading you measured on the map, and you would keep the station you have overflown just barely, you would keep that on your directly behind you and if you would like if, if it wouldn't if it would start to move to one direction you would correct a bit because it would start to move because of wind or any other factor so you would keep it directly behind it and therefore you would be flying more or less the direction you want to go but away from the station you have been navigating to previously and then you would occasionally check on your next station which you couldn't receive before and you would go ahead and um, once you receive it you would tune you to that one Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope it was of some help. If you want to have more information about this topic, maybe you want to see a proper long range flight doing the NDB navigation, I let me know in the comments and I will do so. And thank you very much for watching and have a great time. See ya.